Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So usually at around this time we would be taking a look at all of the new upgrades, updates and changes to the very latest CMU version which was meant to release just yesterday. However, in a slightly strange turn of events, we are not going to be getting a new CMU version this week or for the next couple of weeks either for that matter. To explain exactly why we're not getting any CMU versions, we're going to have to take a look at a brand new Patreon preview post which was given to us by the developers of CMU only yesterday. I'm now going to read out exactly what we've been told by these developers, so here we go. First of all, this post was titled News on CMU 1.16.0. Hey patrons, we have some bad news and some good news. The good news first, we have something to talk about that many of you have been looking forward to, a Vulcan progress report. As many of you know, for the last couple of months we have been working on a Vulcan graphics backend for CMU emulator. Most of the work has been done in silence since there wasn't really anything exciting happening or any screenshots to show at all. We spent months just learning the Vulkan API restructuring the existing backend and implementing the fundamentals required to render even a single pixel in-game. Then finally, only two weeks ago, we reached a massive milestone, the first graphics rendered in CMU's Vulkan backend. We are then given this preview image of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, it being the very first game to render graphics in this Vulkan API backend. Obviously not the world's most demanding game, but it gets much much better, so let's continue with all the rest of the information in this Patreon post. From there, everything progressed rather quickly, and while we still have a long ways to go, a couple of games are already playable in this Vulcan API. Now a little bit later on, we're going to be taking a look at a few more screenshots and even some gameplay videos they have been providing us with, but for now, I want to go through this information they have given us in this Patreon post, where next they have given us a quick FAQ or a frequently asked questions about this Vulcan backend. First up, we have the question of how well does it perform and how are the frame rates compared to OpenGL, to which we have been told it's too soon to tell honestly, while some games already run well we haven't had a chance to do proper benchmarking yet. Additionally, the most taxing games, including The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, do not currently run yet on the new Vulcan backend. Now, while they say Breath of the Wild isn't running or rendering on this new Vulcan backend, I believe some of the information in this post from yesterday is a little bit old, considering on CMU's official Discord just yesterday, one of the official developers, Exap, posted some images of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild actually booting and rendering some some graphics in its initial title screen. Again, as I said a little bit later on, we're going to be taking a look at some images in a chronological order in respect to the development of Vulcan. For now, let's again continue with this FAQ where they have been asked, will there be work in progress aka beta release builds for Vulcan API? To which they have answered, yes, we plan on releasing early access builds for our Vulcan backend starting Friday the 26th of July. These early access releases will only be available to CMU emulators Patreon supporters. Once we reach an acceptable level of compatibility, performance and stability, we will release the Vulcan build to the public in the form of CMU 1.16.0. In the meantime, we'll continue to release new versions as 1.15.x updates as usual, which leads me to believe that the next CMU release is going to be a Vulcan work in progress, potentially a version 1.15.11. So there we have it guys, we have an actual, feasible and announced release date for the Vulcan API in CMU emulator. It is going to be available to all CMU patrons on Friday the 26th of July, just under two weeks from today. Today. Now here comes the bad news in relation to CMU, here's what they've told us. In the excitement and rush to get Vulcan to work, we didn't get a lot of other stuff done. What we have accumulated is not enough to warrant a proper release version, so ultimately we decided to skip the release schedule for today, 
I hope you can forgive us knowing that we were still quite busy working on CMU. It just means that we do not have anything to release to you right now. So if you're not aware of it, CMU emulator switched to a two week release cycle, meaning that you're supposed to get a new build every two weeks with these new releases usually happening on a Friday. And as this post explains, due to their work on Vulcan, they do not currently have something that they are comfortable in releasing. Myself and I would imagine most of you guys out there in the CMU emulator community are probably not going to be too worried about this, especially so since we now have an actual release date for the Vulkan API. Now as I also said a little bit earlier on in the video, CMU's developers have given us a kind of chronologically ordered preview of their work so far on the Vulkan API, so let's take a quick look at all of that. So first up we have a post from June 26th. After many months of work, we have the first graphics rendered using the new Vulkan backend. While it may not look like much, the nature of Vulkan means we had to re-implement a large chunk of the renderer backend from scratch. It took a lot of time to reorganize, restructure and rethink our existing backend. Some parts could be reused, others had to be adapted and most had to be completely redesigned from the ground up with Vulkan in mind. On the same day as Shovel Knight showed graphics for the first time, we got Family Tennis to render the first 3D graphics. The output is upside down because by default Vulkan has a mirrored Y axis compared to the OpenGL renderer. Next up we have some shots of Super Mario 3D World's intro screen where we are told that at this point most games would crash either CMU or the graphics driver due to a lot of unsupported graphics features. Very clear by the fact that the on-screen displayed image of Super Mario 3D World is very graphically corrupt. Next we have a post from June 27th, Breath of the Wild progresses to the title screen. On a side note, you may have noticed the low FPS in the title bar in some of these screenshots. We intentionally avoid many optimizations because with every shortcut, there is a risk of introducing new bugs that might be difficult to track down and fix in future. Additionally, most of these screenshots were made using several debug features turned on like extensive logging, which further reduces the performance in all of these games. The TLDR of this is, these games are actually running much better than they are displayed on screen, they are simply running CMU emulator in a debug mode which makes it run or seem to run much much worse. Next up, we have a post from July 1st where we're told that SNES Virtual Console games are now playable and quickly after that we are shown that they have fixed the upside down rendering problems with the Vulkan API. At the same time, they have also fixed Super Mario 3D World's intro screen where it now renders correctly. Unfortunately, at this date, July 1st, the game is still crashing immediately afterwards. Moving on to July 3rd and as they tell us, somewhat unexpected, while testing various games, they noticed that Dr. Luigi already works with only minor graphical issues. At the same time as this post, Twilight Princess is currently outputting a black screen, however when using their graphical debugging tools they can see that its 3D is actually rendering fine and this black screen issue is being caused by the post processing being broken in the game. Next up we flash forward to July 4th where a new Super Luigi U progresses to its title screen and while yes there is a double vision like effect going on in the background otherwise the graphics are mostly intact and rendered correctly. At the same time, they got Wind Waker HD to progress far enough to render at the title screen, where we are told that it is running at a blazing fast 0.3 FPS, but as mentioned previously, we should ignore any of the performance numbers seen in these screenshots. Moving on to July 5th, Super Mario 3D World no longer crashes before the title screen, and they are even able to progress in-game, however the graphical output is just a green and white flashing polygonical mess. On this same day, Twilight Princess HD's title screen now renders semi-correctly with no more broken black screen issues from the broken post-processing. In-game graphics are also shown off to be rendering correctly also. Moving forward again to July 6th, further improvement can be seen on Wind Waker HD where the corrupted polygons are now completely gone. They're even able to progress into gameplay where you can also see that they have rendered 3D graphics. Jumping forward again to July 10th and with 4 days of additional fixes, this is now how Wind Waker looks. At this stage they have also finished implementing some optimizations, meaning that in this previously mentioned scene 
Steam U debug mode, they can now run these games at 5 frames per second instead of 0.5 frames per second, and outside of this debug mode, they are able to run it at full speed. Now, outside of these images I've already shown you, there are a hell of a lot more of them, and I will even be linking the article in which they are posted down in the description of this video, so head on over there if you want to check out even more previews. Personally, I think that considering the fact that Simu has only been rendering graphics using this Vulkan API for the last 20 or so days, they have made absolutely astounding progress in that time, and I've absolutely no doubt that by the time the 26th of July rolls around and we get our first work in progress of Vulcan publicly available builds, this is going to be even better than we've already been shown. At the end of this video, I'm going to be leaving you with some gameplay footage of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD running at full speed in this Vulcan API on CMU emulator. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys are most excited for in this new Vulcan API and are you as hyped as I am for its release date on the 26th. For now, that's going to be it for this video. As I said, I'm going to be leaving you with this gameplay footage of Wind Waker HD on Vulcan. As always guys, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.